Hey class, and welcome to New Testament Survey NT130. Um, this is discussion 11. Um, we are getting towards the end of our semester, and so I hope that you are hanging in there, you're hanging strong. And of course, if you um, need any help or have any assistance or have any questions on anything that we have going on this semester, please don't hesitate to reach out. I'm really rooting for you. I'm in your corner. I want you to succeed. And so um, don't hesitate to do that. We are covering uh, Gundry chapter 17, which is the general epistles uh, in the New Testament. And um, obviously we can't cover all of them. Um, I want you to encourage you to read that, uh, answer the essay questions. But um, what I wanted to do is I wanted to focus on the book of James. James has always fascinated me um, and really the tone and the form of his writing and really the practicality that we find in James uh, for the believer. It's really um, a, a how-to um, to live this Christian life we find in James. And so a few years ago, I wrote a study on it for our church um, on the whole book, and I wanted to just give you a little bit of chapter one so maybe you can be able to look at James in a little bit of a different light and also ask you some contemplative questions that you can be able to ask yourself and ponder um, as you think about them. So I just got a few verses on our PowerPoint and then I'm just going to discuss a little bit. Uh, here goes. So our first one is James chapter 1 verse 2. Um, obviously James greets in verse 1 and then verse 2 he gets to the meat of it. Right? He jumps in right away and he says this. He says, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, right? What an introduction. Uh, the Greek work here for trials, right? Um, consider it when you face trials of many kinds is uh, paraismos, which refers to an unwelcome or unexpected experience, which can consist of two things, all right? So when James is speaking of trials, he's talking about trials, difficulties, challenges, right? Tribulations, right? That you go through in your life or temptations, okay? And so, um, again, why should we consider it pure joy whenever we face these trials and temptations? Well, James continues to develop his thought, okay? Um, and then so, uh, let's see here. James also refers to joy, okay, here in this uh, verse 2. Um, as an extended state of well-being rather than a, an immediate feeling of happiness or pleasure, okay? So it's an immediate, it's an extended state of well-being, right? So that word joy, consider it pure joy, right? So it's almost like James is saying that um, this extended feeling of joy should dictate and navigate our lives, even in the midst of these trials that we're facing, and so, again, one of the questions is, do we, do we find ourselves living in this type of joy in the face of trials? Why or why not, right? Trials are unexpected. We don't plan them. They don't uh, let us know, and they don't put themselves in the calendar. They just happen, right? And so, um, James is encouraging the church to have this extended um, state of well-being, okay? So, why joy? Well, let's continue. James 1, 3, and 4 says, Because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. So why? Well, there it is. It's maturity, right? We see that word here. So that you may be mature, right? That's the goal. That is the, um, that is the aim, that James is driving at. Why these trials? Well, they're, they're a part of it is because they develop maturity, right? Maturity is the one of the primary purposes of trials, right? However, before we can arrive to maturity, James uses another word. There's a, there's a few words here in this scripture, right? He uses the word in verse 4 and at the end of 3, perseverance, perseverance, right? God wants to develop perseverance in us. What is that word? When we translate it in the Greek, that word really is endurance, right? Endurance. What's endurance? Well, it's being able to, to continue in the long haul, right? Um, right? Endurance can be understood as growing determination, right? Um, I just think of it as a runner, right? Endurance is kind of like connected to runners. When you first start running, 
um, and you haven't run in a while, you don't really have endurance, right? But you build endurance, right? So the more that you run, maybe the first day you can only run a half mile, right? But maybe day three, you're doing a three, three quarters of a mile. And then day five, you're doing a mile and a quarter, right? And so on and so forth. And so uh, that's the endurance. So James is saying endurance can be understood as it's this growing determination in the face of adversity. But what is our motivation? It's based on hope, right? So based on the hope that we have in Christ, right? Um, we we um, grow in our endurance, right? Um, we You may think of it this way. Maybe the things that knocked you down or held you up when you were um, younger in the Lord are things that don't hold you up and knock you down anymore. Why? Because you're growing adversity, right? You're growing determination, right? In the face of adversity, it's continuing to build. And now... Right, those things that used to get you don't get you anymore. Okay, so how do you see God producing this form of endurance in your life? Right? Do you see that you are growing? Uh, your determination is growing in the face of adversity, or do you find that you're continually getting knocked down? Right? Maybe it's in those areas that God wants to develop maturity in us. Okay. All right, here we go. Let's go to the next one. James 1, 12 through 15, this is what it says. Blessed is the one, right? Or this is really the end of this first section, um, going through trials because of Joyce. This is really the end. Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. So James kind of transitions, ends, concludes this um this section on trials and perseverance and endurance with this verse right you will receive the crown of life if we are able to persevere to the end okay let's go to the next one uh james 1 19 through 21 says this my dear brothers and sisters take note of this everyone should be quick to listen slow to speak and slow to become angry because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. Therefore, get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent and humbly accept the word planted in you, which can save you. All right. And so I always think of this verse um, growing up because this was one of the verses that my dad, who was a pastor, would hang on the fridge and really in just a bunch of different places in the house. Why? Because me and my sister would be fighting. And we would get angry and we would start yelling. Right. And so um, he, he had a he had a great idea going on because um, James, he basically gives us the steps. He gives us three steps um, that we can be able to take to avoid anger. And this is just good, practical um, wisdom, practical advice that we can be able to use in our lives, even today as believers. Right. Think about the times that we get angry. Not all the time, but there are some times that we do this in reverse. What are the steps that James gives us, right? Well, we should be quick to listen. Are we quick to listen? Many times when we get angry, we do the opposite of listening, but we actually are quick to speak, right? Without really processing, without really thinking what the person is saying, right? We're not listening, we're just jumping to conclusions, right? We are coming out with an answer before we have concluded, uh, maybe, or try to understand what the person is saying, right? Even if they disagree with us, right? Again, quick to listen, step one. Step two, slow to speak, right? Oh my goodness. Today, more than ever, right, people are quick to speak, right? And somebody says something that they disagree with politically or on social media, and, and there's just the, there's a, there, the storm, right? The war. Right on the comments that's taking place. Why? Because we're we're not uh, listening um, intently, and we're being quick to speak. But James is saying, be slow. Think about what you're gonna say, right? And slow to become angry. And so he gives us this three prong solution that every Christian should practice, and really with the help of the Holy Spirit, right? To ask God to help me to be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. One of the things I love about Jesus is that you see in his ministry, he wasn't quick to speak. Jesus wasn't, he wasn't uh, uh, um, slow to listen, right? But when I see Jesus, he, he really meant every word that he said. Even when he was standing in front of Pilate, 
right? And he was going through all those trials uh, with those in those many in, before he was crucified, right? He used his words wisely. He didn't say anything that he didn't want to say. And so I pray that over my life, right, that I would follow in his footsteps, okay? Verse 20 says, because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. Verse 21 says this, therefore get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent and humbly accept the word planted in you, which can save you. All right? I love this because uh, James tells us to, uh, to re remove and replace, right? He doesn't tell us to just remove something, but he tells us to replace it with something else. So what does he tell us to remove? Well, there it is, right? Get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent in, in you, right? So what is he telling us? Those, those um, tendencies that we have, those fleshly tendencies, right, that we have on the inside of us. He's saying, get rid of those things. And what is he doing? He's saying, replace it with what? Um, humbly accept the word planted in you, which can save you. So instead of, um, instead of uh, fostering that moral filth and that and those fleshly uh, that living and, and and how we how we live our lives right replace it with the word of God right Romans twelve two says do not be conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind right the way that we think um, that the word of God renews our mind and so the way that we used to think which was ungodly unworldly uh, you know filthy sometimes that word of God um, James is saying, replace it with that so that you can be able to think like Jesus. Okay. All right. Last one. We got one more here. Oh, um, I don't think I have it here, but I got, let me just read it to you. Okay. This one this is what it says. This is a great one too. Do not merely listen. This is James 1, through 25. I forgot to put it on the PowerPoint here, but do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continued, continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. So what is James saying? James states that our response to God's word should involve two parts, right? It should involve listening, right? And I want to say maybe even the more important part is doing, right? Which when we put into practice will lead to transformation. And so the question is, what are the traps sometimes as believers that believers can fall into regarding God's word, right? What are, what are the traps that believers can fall to? Well, one of the things I've grown up in church and, and that I've discovered is that believers, Christians, can become desensitized to God's Word. Maybe you've heard it growing up. Maybe your parents have, have preached it to you and spoken it to you. Maybe you've heard it in church and in small groups, right? Maybe you haven't, right? Um, but we become desensitized. And what happens is we hear God's Word, and um, it, 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 uh, it goes in one ear and out the other, right? Um, and so what we do is we say, well... Um, we, we don't allow ourselves um, to be placed in an intimate, personal um, response to God's Word, right? And what I'm saying is when we hear God's Word, it should be as if God is directly speaking to me, right? And so we lose that, right? It becomes, we become desensitized. It becomes impersonal. Well, this is just the Word of God speaking generally. No, but... We have to regain that understanding that this is God's word for me, right? Therefore, I have to uh, be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. What areas in my life am I not doing that? How can I begin doing that? God is speaking to me about this. How am I living up, measuring up to his word in my life, okay? And so we need to get sensitized again to God's word, okay? And so just imagine uh, looking at yourself in the mirror for two seconds, right? You look at yourself in the mirror, I'm just going to do, and then we come back in, right? Or looking at yourself in the mirror for two minutes, right? What would be the difference that you take away, right? You're able to grasp more. You're able to look at the imperfections, right? 
uh, on your face, in your nose, on your forehead, in your hair, right? The hairs that are out of place. And it's the same with the Word of God. Uh, James is encouraging us, right, to look intently into God's Word, right? And so the question, what are practical ways that you can be successful in looking intently into God's Word? How can you continue in it for the long run, right? So here we go. That was just James chapter 1 uh, on the study that I, I put together a few years ago on the book of James. I hope that this gives you a little bit of spark, a little bit of life uh, on this general epistle written by James, the half-brother of Jesus, right? Uh, leader of the Jerusalem church, uh, really big, you know, pretty big heavy hitter. And so um, I hope that you were able to get walk away with something from this. I look forward to reading your essays. And of course, reach out to me if you have any questions. Thanks.